Okay, so this is problem 16 from chapter 3. It's a problem, this the example, this is a good example uh, of a problem that gives you actual data instead of a, um, instead of just giving you the ratio or that sort of thing, it gives you these numbers, these real numbers, and asks you to sort of figure out what the ratios are. And so it's a cross. Uh, between tan and red and we get all tan in this generation and then we get 93 and 24 so 93 tan and 24 red uh, the way to approach these problems is to start with simple assumptions and then uh, see if they fit uh, so this looks like a pretty good example of a monohybrid cross because uh, it looks like a 3 to 1 ratio. We actually calculate the ratio, 93 divided by 24. We end up with about 3.8 to 1. That might be a little high. It's closer to 4 to 1 than 3 to 1. And so we'll think about uh, maybe using a... Um, and using a, a chi-square test to see if these numbers really fit. But for this cross, we're basically going to say, okay, this looks like a 3 to 1. If it's a 3 to 1, that means it's a monohybrid cross, which means two monohybrids crossed together, giving us three that look like that, one that looks like this, which is can also be written as a, the full genotypic ratio like this, so where these guys get combined to give you the three, this guy gives you the one, these guys are all tan, these guys are red. All right, that seems to make sense. If all that's true, then this was homozygous dominant. Uh, we know it's dominant because we cross tan to red and we get the heterozygote. The heterozygote is tan. That means the tan allele is dominant. And so we could also say up here, big T equals tan and little t equals red. It helps to define our symbols. And quite often, once you know this, you can just fill everything else. In. So that's the official uh, answer to this problem. And But we're going to go a little bit farther and see if we can't um, think about the chi-square to test if this really is a 3 to 1 ratio. So to do that, we're going to do a chi-square test. chi-square test is really the sum of several chi-square tests. So that's a chi sine sigma chi. Um, sum of chi-squares. And that's observed minus expected. Then we square this value and we divide it by the expected. And we do that for all the categories that we have. We come up with a number. That's our chi-square number. Then we find a p-value. And we're going to use a chi-square chart for that. What we find is that if a p is less than 0.05, maybe it's less than or equal to, what does that mean? This p value means that this, we're looking at the probability that the difference between the observed and the expected, the probability that that difference uh, is due to chance. This is a low probability that it's due to chance. So that means it's due to something else. And so if it's due to something else, we have to reject the hypothesis. What hypothesis, you might be thinking? Well, formally speaking, it's our null hypothesis. And our null hypothesis is a 3 to 1 ratio. We're trying to see if our observed numbers are so different from our expected numbers that we have to reject this. If you get a high chi-square value, you get a low p-value. And so then, conversely, if p is greater than 0.05, we do not reject. And we see, reject. Um, and so let's say we get a p-value of 0.2. That means it's a pretty high probability that the difference that we see is due to chance. If there's a high probability that it's due to chance, then we assume it's due to chance. And we say there's nothing wrong with the hypothesis, nothing wrong with the data. Uh, this data does fit that hypothesis. So that's sort of the thinking behind it. 
Um, but how do you actually go about doing it? Well, we have our observed numbers. And we need to come up with some expected numbers. So our observed numbers were 93 and 24. That's observed. If we add that up, that's 117. Our expected are, um, so we have 117. Based on our hypothesis, we expect three-fourths of one kind, and we expect one-fourth of the other kind. So this was the tan and the red. Tan and red. So that's you need real numbers, um, and then you need to use fractions. Uh, so that's why it's good to take a three-to-one ratio and actually express it as a three-fourths to one-fourth uh, ratio because uh, it's easier to use. Or it's, it's necessary to use that fraction here. So now we're just taking our total number of offspring. We're saying if we counted that total number, and we, what's three-fourths of that? That number happens to be 87.75. And you leave your decimals in there, even though you can't um, have you know three-quarters of, of a pea plant or whatever these things are, a melon plant. Um, we still use the decimals. So these are our expected values for each of these uh, categories. Simple enough, but it's important. Total times the fraction. So now we observed our observed values. The observed values always come from the actual experiment. So you can't really make those up. You don't have to calculate them. And chi-square, we typically do this kind of a table. And then we'll come up with a chi-square value for each category, and we will add them up. So we had 93 and 24. We expected 89.75. I'm sorry, 87. 0.75 and 29.25. O minus E is 5.25. Here it happens to be minus 5.25. And that's just happens to be the case with this particular problem. Uh, and it, but it il illustrates why we want to square it. Because if we sort of, we're trying to calculate how different these numbers are. And if some of the numbers are o over the expected and some of them are under the expected, they'll essentially cancel each other out if we if we if we consider the sign. So we square it to get rid of that sign. When we square this, we get 27.56, and here we also get 27.56. Um, so you know it's not always going to be the same. At least this makes life easy because um, we only have to calculate it once. Then I left this E down in the way, uh, so we're going to move over here and say 27.56 over the expected, which is, in this case, 87.75. This guy here is 27.56 over um, 29.25. So I'm going to put, so those calculations I'm going to put down here. So 27.56 divided by 87.75 is 0.314. 27.56 divided by 29.25 is 0.94. Now we have to add those up because each of those is a chi-square value and we want to do the sum of the chi-square value. We add those up, we get 1.25. So that's our chi-square number. That doesn't tell us anything yet. Uh, we have to use that number to come up with the p-value. And then we also need a number called the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom are the number of categories. In this case, one category, two categories. The number of categories, n minus 1. In our case, that's 2 minus 1 equals 1. So degrees of freedom, 1 chi-square value, 1.25. Now we have to use that information and look at a chi-square 
table and come up with a p-value. All right, so what's our p-value? Um, I'm going to look very quickly at a chi-square chart. And we have, move it over here. So we have degrees of freedom of 1. Let's see if I can draw on this thing. Sure. Yep, degrees of freedom of 1. Because um, we did n minus 1 equals 1. And then down here, these numbers down here, all of these numbers, these are the chi-square numbers. And then these numbers up here are the p-values. So we need to figure out our p-value. In this case, it's degrees of freedom of 1. Remember, our chi-square was 1.25. That comes in here somewhere. So I don't really care where. It's somewhere between 0.1 and 0 0.90. All we really care about is this value. So if it's to the left of that value, it means one thing. If it's to the right of that value, it means another thing. So down here, we've got our p-values less than 0.05. Over here, we've got our p-values greater than 0.05. Okay. So what does that mean? We have to remember. That's the hard part, is remembering what things mean. So chi-square values going left to right are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That means that the difference between the two things are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's see if I can make this a little So, so as chi-square get, values get bigger, you'll notice that these values get smaller. And a small p-value means that the uh, the observed, the difference between the observed and the expected, the probability that that, um, that that difference is due to chance is low. This is a low probability. So that means we reject the hypothesis. Oops, that's a T. This pen's not working too good. Reject our null hypothesis. Why? Because the probability that the difference between the observed and the expected is due to chance is very low. Over here, where we are, is uh, the probability is kind of high. So here, we do not reject. Do not. Wow, this is ugly. Do not <laughs> reject. Looks like. Uh, a child reject. Why is that? Because the, the probability up in this area is relatively high. By Just by default, by definition, if it's greater than 0.05, that means the probability is high enough um, that we can say, yep, there's a probability that the difference we see is due to chance. Uh, and so that's sort of how we interpret that. So we won't reject our hypothesis. Uh, let's say that our, that our p-value is somewhere in here. Let's it's 1.1, yeah, so let's say it's like 0.4. Well, there's, we could calculate it exactly, but we don't need to do that. All right, so looking at the chi-square table, um, assuming that what I just did showed up on here, we got a p-value of approximately, let me get my pencil back, a p-value of approximately 0.4. So that means probability that the difference between observed and expected was due to chance is relatively high. Um, we do not reject the hypothesis. And so uh, that means uh, we accept the 3 to 1 ratio hypothesis. Yeah, that's kind of how you use chi-square. Uh, it was a little goofy trying to jump back and forth with the recording program.
But we'll see more examples of that, and um, there's examples in the book, and we'll keep working on it. So uh, it's more the logic, you know, keeping in mind that O minus E is what we're really interested in. Is this observed minus expected really big? If it's big, if you have a high difference, then you can get, you get a high chi-square. Get a high chi-square, you're going to get a low p-value. Get a low p-value, um, you are going to reject the hypothesis because that's essentially sort of the probability um, that the that the two um, that the data matches the, uh, the the model or the hypothesis, and it's a low probability that they match. So, um, so you have to uh, reject. I like thinking about this, about the higher the chi-square value, the more likely it is to reject the hypothesis because the more different the two are. 